So symmetry is fantastic. And the cool thing is that we can often use symmetry to help us graph interesting graphs of interesting equations. Let's take a look at an example together where symmetry is going to allow us to really understand better what the graph of a certain equation looks like. Check it out. I want us to graph y equals x cubed minus 4x. OK, so let me just quickly remind you of the different types of symmetry that we've talked about together. The first type is symmetry with respect to the y-axis, which means that what happens on the left of the y-axis also happens correspondingly on the, the right of the y-axis and, and, and so forth. And the way you check for that is by replacing all the x's by negative x's into your equation and see if you get the exact same equation. If you do, awesome. If not, it's not symmetric across the, the y-axis. Correspondingly with the x-axis, whether things correspond on top of the, above the x-axis to what happens below the x-axis, you just replace the y by negative y and see if you get the exact same equation. If you do, you're good to go. And with respect to the origin is if it's symmetric both with respect to the y-axis and x-axis at the same time. So replace both x by negative x and y by negative y and see if you get the original equation. If you do, you're great. All right, so let's actually ask that question. Is this, is this particular equation symmetric with respect to anything? I don't know. Don't ask me. But let's try to figure it out. So with respect to the y-axis, so what do we do here? We take a look and replace all the x's by negative x's and see what happens. So I take the original equation and replace all the x's by negative x's. And now we have to simplify. So y equals, now that's a negative 1 times x, if you want to think of it that way. And negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, negative 1 cubed, is actually negative. So that negative sign actually pops out. And I just have the x cubed here. And then I have um, a minus and a minus is a plus 4x. So question for us, is this equation the same as this equation? Well, look closely and you see the answer is no. No, it's not. So not symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Why would you even think such a silly thing? Nah, I'm just kidding. You got to check it. You got to check it. All right. What about with respect to the x-axis? That means we have to see if we change y to negative y if, in fact, we get the same, same thing. So just put a negative y in. This is easy to check, actually. Because to solve for y, I'll multiply everything through by negative 1. And I see y equals negative x cubed plus 4x. Is this equation the same as that equation? No. Different. So no. So you might be giving up and saying, you know what? This is not symmetric with respect to anything that we know and love. Well, let's just try with respect to the origin and see. So what do we do there? There we switch each of the variables, y to negative y, x to negative x, and see if we get the original equation. So minus, negative y equals negative x quantity cubed minus 4 times negative x. Now we've got to simplify all over the place. Let's first just clean up the right-hand side. So we already talked about this. Negative uh, x cubed is actually negative x cubed. That negative sign pops out. And then a negative times a negative is a positive, 4x. And now I'll multiply both sides through by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign. And I see y equals negative a negative is a positive. Negative a positive is a negative. Now check it out. Are these two equations the same? Yeah, they actually are. This graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the origin. So we're going to see whatever happens kind of on the right-hand side is going to happen kind of underneath, kind of correspondingly on the other side, like a flip-flip. Wow. OK, cool. So now we know that. And we have to remember that. We have to remember that because that's going to be handy later. OK, cool. Now, to now graph this thing, I'm now going to find the zeros of the equation. Now, how do you find the zeros of the equation? The zeros, that's just a very fancy way for saying, where does this graph cross the x-axis? Or another way of putting it, where do we see a y equals 0? So if we take y and set it equal to 0 and solve, what are the x values? So if we try that, I'm going to take this and set it equal to 0. That's how we're going to find the zeros of this uh, particular equation. 
Well, then you just factor, and you know how to factor, please. I don't want to insult you. How dare I? But I'm going to do it. I've got to do it. How are you going to factor this? I'm going to factor out an x. I see a common factor of x. I'm left with x squared minus 4 equals 0. This is the difference of two perfect squares. Look at me go, like a big shot. Mm-hmm. So I've got a product of three things equaling 0. Either the first is 0, which means x equals 0. There's my first 0 of the equation. Um, x plus 2 equals 0, which means x equals negative 2. Or x minus 2 equals 0, which means x equals 2. So I see that there are three zeros to this equation, which means that this graph will cross the uh, x-axis at three different points, at x equals 0, at x equals negative 2, and x equals 2. OK. Now, we've got that all straightened away. What we want to do now is we want to actually um, pick some points uh, nearby these zeros to get a sense of kind of what's happening around those zeros. So you just pick some points. And so let's just pick uh, negative 3, which is kind of near the negative 2. And we'll pick the, the negative 1, which is kind of near the 0 point, And we'll find the corresponding y value. And in case you've forgotten or you're lonesome for it, remember that here's the function y equals x cubed minus 4x. So um, if I let x equals negative 3, uh, here's the equation. So what do we get? I see negative 3 cubed minus 4 times negative 3. And what's that? Well, this is just negative 27 plus 12, which is negative 15. So I see negative 15. And what about if x equals negative 1? If I plug it into the equation, I see negative 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1. And what does that equal? Well, this is going to be a uh, negative 1 plus 4, which equals 3. So now I want to record these uh, points that we found on a little chart here. And I'm running out of space here. Look at all these things. There's so many exciting things to put down here. And so what I'm going to put in here uh, is going to be negative 3 and negative 1. And the cool thing is, for free, I can actually put in 1 and 3. Because I'm going to use the fact that the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the origin. And you'll see how, how in a second. Let's just record this. When x equals negative 3, y equals negative 15. Let's just write all this in first, and then we'll think about We'll think about life later. When x equals negative 1, we see y equals 3. OK, now check it out. Since it is symmetric with respect to the origin, if I flip both x and y, I know that that's still going to actually satisfy everything. So that means that if I change the sign of this and change the sign of this, this still has to hold. So I know this has to be a negative 3 because I just take the opposite of this and the opposite of this. Correspondingly, if I take the opposite of this, it will correspond to the opposite of this. So this must be 15. So you see how you can plug in values on a table without even calculating that. That's the power of, of knowing that it's symmetric to anything. It allows you to kind of understand the structure of this thing. All right, now all that's done. We don't care about that. And now we're ready for the grand finale of actually trying to graph it. So let's see if we can graph this, this bad boy. And here we go. We're going to graph this particular equation. And here's where I start. I first want to put in the zeros. Remember, the zeros, those are the places where it's going to cross the x-axis. And we found them here. At, at x equals 0, that's the origin. At x equals negative 2. And at x equals 2. And then I have these points that I can just plot. So at negative 3. I'm at negative 15, so I'm way down right here. And actually, I'm going to jump right to here. At 3, I'm at 15. So at 3, I'm at 15. You see how that's the corresponding point kind of over the origin? That's the symmetry that we're seeing there. And then at negative 1, we're at 3. Negative 1, we're at 3. Now, at 1, I'm going to be at negative 3. And so I'm over here. OK, so now we have to connect the points. And remember that whatever happens on this side is going to happen kind of flip, flip on that side. And you can see the picture. You see how the picture is? It's going to kind of want to go up and down and then down and up. That's what it means to, to be symmetric with respect to the origin. So I'm going to try to sketch it in right now live.
Wow, not bad actually for freehand. Come on, that's pretty good. Notice that it is symmetric to the origin. Whatever happens here, it happens kind of reverse, reverse here, right? Whatever happens here, reverse, reverse, it's happening here and so forth. So that's the graph. And in fact, I've already worked one out, a fancy one. And you can see, here's the official one. So here's the official one, and here's mine. And which one do you like better? I think it's clear. A homemade one is always better than a store-bought one. So here's the graph, and notice that by looking at symmetry, we were able to give a really accurate picture, and we know what happens on one side, how that's going to affect what happens on the other side because of the symmetry. In this case, it's a flip-flip. And so whatever happens there, it's got to happen kind of the opposite on the other side. Cool. Anyway, enjoy thinking about these wonderful, wonderful graphs of really cool equations. I'll see you soon.